This video will show how to import data that was measured in the field using Leica Captivate into the LSS Office software. In particular, it will focus on the import of coding and line work. This video will not cover the importing of multi-station scan data or images, as these will be covered in another video. Ideally, as many of the drawing tasks as possible will be automatically carried out when we import the data into LSS. This video will show what drawing processes can be automated, including the importing and representation of all codes, detailing the total station setup information and observations, and, assuming the correct settings are made, the correct drawings of lines with line styles and colours, as well as the correct drawing of symbols and the displaying of descriptive text. This video is produced in three parts. The first part is the workflow section which initially shows the data in Leica Captivate before showing the steps required to bring that into LSS and taking a look at what has been imported and drawn correctly. The second part is a look behind the scenes where we take a look at the LSS configuration required to import the data as we showed in part one. The third and final part is optimization where we take a look at how some small on-site changes to our process would have made our data flow even easier and even smoother and improved the final result. Before continuing to watch this video, it is recommended to watch the other how-to videos on coding and line work within Leica Captivate. And it is also worth noting that the settings made in the second part of this video were already in place before we made the first part, therefore for a new installation we should do part 2 before part 1. The job we shall use is the one that was created during the coding and line work videos, so we already know it a little. However, we should look at it again and in more detail. The best way to do this is using the 3D Viewer app. To start, let's look at the tree. It was measured in the videos, but separate to that, we've added some attributes for its height, its canopy spread, and also to identify the species of tree. In addition to a point with attributes, we also measured many linear features, such as fences, footpaths, and curbs, which include some more complicated line work, which we'll look at. Here we have a fence-gate-fence combination, and here we have a T-junction between two fences. Across the road we have an arc defined by three points, and then in the northeast we have an arc of best fit defined by multiple points. And then here we have the pond, which was measured using the spline and using the closed line line work. Now that we have a good overview of the data, we can move on. LSS is able to import from a Leica Captivate job format directly, so we just transfer or copy the job onto our computer and then start LSS. The first thing we can do is make a new file to import the data into. Here, the important thing to have right is the prototype, as this is a template defining all the attributes of our file and containing the legend or codes that we will use with this survey. Here, we can just use the default installed prototype and continue. Next, we need to download or convert our data. To do this, we need to let LSS know what instrument or logger we are bringing data from. Here, there is already one for Captivate, but if there wasn't, we would simply press change and then new to add a DBX database reader. With that selected, we can press OK to continue through and select the job that we want to import. We can actually use Windows Explorer to find the file and just drag and drop it into the LSS window. With that done, we then get to check what like a Captivate job is selected for processing, and then we can press OK to have our data converted into a load file, shown here as 001. We're now on the import load file screen, where we're able to configure what will happen with our import report, if we want to use any feature conversion, some additional options, and to choose which load file we actually want to import. Here we have only one load file, so we can import it, but before we'll do, we'll activate a conversion file so that the codes we used on site with Leica Captivate are matched to ones that are in the default legend and default prototype of LSS. Here we'll use a conversion file that was created especially for this video and then just press next to import our data. We're now prompted to confirm our initial setup and we see an input report containing our setup information and information about the load. It can be seen that there are a couple of warnings in this load file, but that is due to the way we coded our data on site. We can ignore those warnings for now and press continue and OK to have our drawing displayed for us. So with that done, let's take a closer look at what has been imported. By zooming in, we can see that the tree has been imported with the correct symbol. We can also see that the fence gate fence combination has been imported, as has the T-junction between two fences. The three-point arc has come through curved, and so has the line of best fit. 
However, we can see that we have an error message where the manhole should have been, and we can see that our pond has been drawn with straight segments, not using a curved spline, and also it hasn't closed and contains an error message. But these small problems are purely due to the coding, as we'll see later in the video. For now, we should take a look at just how much has been automated, and the best way to do this is to understand how it all worked. The most important thing that was configured before we imported this data into LSS was the coding, because when data is imported, any object with a code that's already defined will be imported with the desired point, line, symbol, shape, or text attributes. So if the incoming data set used codes that didn't match ones from the LSS legend or prototype, and no conversion file was used, then the objects would be drawn according to default settings, which would typically result in the data looking like this. Yes, data has been imported and positions are correct, but symbols and lines are almost all missing, so it's well worth spending a few moments to set up the codes, conversion file, or legend in order to save time in the office with every data set. So let's look at how we make those configurations. In LSS, it is the legend that controls how objects are displayed. So we should configure that by selecting configure and then legend. Here we're able to configure point features, link or line features, surface features, text styles, and make some global settings. The two of these that we'll look at are point and link features. We'll start by just amending one of the link features from the standard LSS legend. By pressing select here, we're actually able to see all of the link or line features that exist within this legend. Once we're into the actual edit screen, we can quickly realize just how much we can configure for each code. We can configure what text is there, we can configure additional options, we can configure the 3D behavior, and we can design our own line style and apply line options, including an option to apply smoothing to lines. In Leica Captivate, we define if we're drawing a straight segment or a curved segment or a spline. But in LSS, the code defines if features can be smoothed or not. If smoothing is on, then LSS uses its own algorithm to detect if the points along a feature represent straight or curved sections without any need for user input. With this understood, we'll just return and do the same for a point feature. When we look at the list of all point features within the legend, the first thing that's obvious is that every single point code starts with the letter P. P is a reserve letter within LSS, always denoting a point code. Here we'll just pick any of the point features and continue through to review the edit screen for this. Initially, we see similar configuration options as to the ones shown for the link or line feature. But then as we continue to the second page, this is where we see the bigger difference. Here, we're actually able to design the symbol that we want to be used with this code. For now, we don't need to change anything. But as we've now understood how to review and modify the codes that are in our legend within LSS, we should take a look at what codes we used on site. It should be noted that for the jobs created in the coding and linework videos, no particular thought went into what office software the data would end up in. So everything was completed using very generic codes, such as centerline, fence, footpath, gate, curb, manhole, pond, tree, verge bottom, verge top, and wall. If we had edited or reviewed our load file before importing it into LSS, we would have seen that those same codes are still present in the LSS load file. So for LSS to be able to draw these, it has to understand those codes. To do this, we would either have to edit the legend to add in all these additional codes or use a conversion file. As this is a one-off case where the data wasn't created specifically for LSS, we will simply use a conversion file. Although of course, if we were gonna repeatedly use the Leica Captivate code list from this job, then we would modify the legend. Now a conversion file is actually a very simple text format. Each line contains first the code from the LSS legend, then, separated by a comma, we have the code that we used in the Leica Captivate code list. We can either create this file manually ourselves, or we can allow LSS to prompt us to create this file as it's running through the load file. To see how that works, we can just delete one of the entries from our conversion file, save it, and then run through importing our load file. Here, when LSS reaches the code that it doesn't understand, it actually prompts us to select the point or link feature that we would like it to be read as. This would then be repeated for every code that the software didn't understand. 
Once it's finished the whole file, we're then offered the chance to save or update our conversion file. Next, we should take a look at splines and closed lines, specifically that pond. When we zoom in on the pond, we can see the segments are drawn straight, the line doesn't close itself, and there's an error. So let's tackle these problems. We'll start by configuring the legend and reviewing the code that we've used for this pond. If we can't remember what the code is, we can use the locate button to just click on the feature where the code will automatically be selected for us. Now, when we review this code, we can see that the smoothing is turned off. So if we turn that on and update our legend, our pond will then be drawn using curves as we require. Now we should take a look at this error and the fact that the line's not closing. Actually, this is nothing more than bad luck. It's simply caused by the fact that we coded it as pond, which starts with the letter P, which as we already found out, is reserved for point codes. This means that the close line command we use in Leica Captivate is not being read by LSS. This close line command did get converted to a dot dot in the LSS load file, but because it was on a code beginning with P, it didn't work. To prove this, we can move the dot dot to the first fence code. Now, if we import that data, we can see that the first fence has closed on itself, proving that LSS is perfectly able to read and support closed lines. So with that understood, we can move on to the scaling of the symbols of point features. To do that, we will take a look at this tree. We enter into configure legend and select to amend a point feature. Then we can use the locate button to select the tree code and review it. We can skip straight to the second page where the symbol is defined and have a look at the symbol size. Currently, this is set to four meters, although we can manually edit it here, for example, to 2.5 meters. Once we store that and save our changes, we can see the tree symbol is resized. This nicely highlights the LSS approach to point scaling, where rather than using a single code in the legend and have it scaled based on attributes, there are actually numerous versions of each code in the legend where each instance has a different scale factor. LSS then combines the Leica Captivate code and first attribute together to match that to one of these symbol sizes. Next, we can take a look at adding text to points, again using the tree. As we can see, some text was automatically added based on the coding that we did on site. However, modifying that text requires modification to the way we work and as such is covered in part three of this video. For now, we'll look at two other methods of adding text. First, by using the legend. So we'll go into configure legend and again, amend the tree code. This time we'll use the text input field in the options area. We could either type in fixed text or use flags that LSS understands. For example, these three symbols here, which call the code, the code without its P prefix and the description. Once that's stored and saved, we can see straight away how the PT, T and tree are now displayed above our symbol. Next, we can use a derive text method. For this method, we specify what text we would like the point to derive. We specify whether it's for just one point or for a selection of points. Then we add descriptions that we'd like to come either before or after our derived text. Once that's done, we simply select where we would like the text to go and then it creates a link text box for us. Both of these methods allow us to create text by a point. And as already mentioned, there is a third method, a fully automatic importing of text where all attributes of a code from attribute four upwards are imported as a new line of text next to the point. That's not the only thing we could gain from slight changes. So those procedural changes are what we'll now look at in part three of this video. In the ideal world, we'd have done our survey knowing full well what software we were gonna end up in. And as such, we would have used the LSS provided code list where we would have used completely different codes such as this pond would have been coded as WAT. But in the scenario where we're doing generic coding, we wouldn't have this LSS code list. However, we didn't need to use the code pond. We could just as easily have used the code waterline. So we'll do that now. The same with the manhole. If we'd had the LSS code list, we could have used the code PMO, but instead we used the code manhole. But to make it more compatible, to make it more LSS friendly, all we needed to do was not use a decimal point in the attributes. So we'll enter the attribute value in decimeters rather than meters. And finally, the tree. If we'd had the LSS code list, we may well have used the code PT, but we didn't and we used the code tree. So here, the change for us would have been to use the attributes in a different order. The first attribute has to be the dimension of the symbol and it has to be an integer. So we'll select three meters. Then we have a couple of blank attributes. 
because they're reserved for adding a second code and second dimension, which we'll come to in a moment. And then we have our text fields. Here we can type in the height, 12M, and we can type in the species, oak tree. Now, if we've been able to make those small changes to our work procedure, it would have resulted in our load file looking a little different. We'd have a waterline code instead of pond, our tree code and our spread attribute would have been concatenated, and our height and tree species would have been available as separate lines to be displayed as text. And finally, our manhole code and first attribute would have been concatenated without the decimal place. But then we could import our data and see straight away that our pond has automatically come through splined and closed, our tree has come through with the correct symbol size and text, and also our manhole has come through as a labelled symbol. We could even have improved it further by basing our tree on LSS's PD code rather than its PT, because for this code the attributes are slightly different. But attribute 2 is actually applying a second code to this point, and attribute 3 is allowing us to add a dimension for that second code. If we'd coded like this in the field, then our load file would have had attributes 2 and 3 concatenated to make a second code on our tree line. And then we can import the data and see that our tree symbol has improved further. It now not only shows a correctly scaled tree canopy, but also a correctly scaled tree trunk. Adding a second code to a point is not the only advanced command that LSS allows us to use. In fact, there are many more which we can activate via the use of Leica free codes. Free codes are codes that we can enter into Leica Captivate, but they do not belong to any specific point or line feature. Actually, they do not do anything for us live in the field. Instead, they're commands for the software back in the office. The easiest way to enter a free code is to already have some in our code list. And actually, the code list provided by LSS already has the free codes we require ready for us. In the field, we then select the free code that we want to use at any time by accessing the Select Free Codes panel of Leica Captivate. To do this, we make sure that it is configured onto a hotkey or in the User Favorites panel, so that when we're collecting data and want to add one of these free codes, we simply call the command to see a list of our codes. When we do that, what we're really seeing is a list of the additional commands that LSS can apply to our data upon import. More information about any of the extra functionality that LSS can offer here can be found by talking to the team behind LSS. With the data all imported and edited, and our knowledge of how to improve our fieldwork extended, we can now see that the data better represents the initial survey than ever before. The symbols are scaled, text is displayed, the lines all curve and close as we require, our data really looks exactly as we desire. This shows that with the right combination of code lists, field procedure and LSS legend, we are able to automate a huge amount of the office work and we end up with data in LSS that truly represents what we did in the field with minimal user interaction needed.